and that is about, you know, not just about, it's 42, 42 suspects. But don't forget that we operate in all the state capitals of Nigeria. So by the time I will amalgamate the conviction in all the state's capital, we are likely to have secured over 300 convictions in the first quarter. Yes. So uh, now brings us to the next question, which is certification. Yeah which uh, to me is an accreditation or evaluation process yeah. adopted by the U.S. government Good. to determine countries which comply with their expectation in terms of drug control. Mm. For the purpose of uh, seven years, mm. Nigeria was blacklisted by the U.S. government mm. because of the drug activities mm. of some unscrupulous Nigerians, mm. only for Alaji mm. mm -hmm. to change the type by getting the country certified. Mm. What is the magic, sir? Uh, when Alaji Bilo Lafayette, the chairman of the executive, is, uh, enter, I mean, came into the agency in October 2000, he told us that he has a mission and a vision. And I think, and he has, relent, I mean, unrelentlessly, I mean, pursued this vision and mission in so many ways. First, the same staff who were in NDLE and could not achieve certification for seven years were the same staff he used to achieve consist, consist, I mean, consistent certification for the past four years. So what he simply did was for, all, for, for him to let us know that we can do it, we have the capability and we have the capacity by motivating and giving us a sense of assurance and belonging. So these are some of the things which have made officers to you know, be very, very aggressive, very courageous, and very painstaking in doing their jobs. And for the students, I would like to tell you now, the drug trade or consumption does not pay. It is a very dangerous trend. You are the leaders of tomorrow. And if you find yourself insane right from day one, you cannot be able to leave this country. I advise you to desist from bad companies and desist from drug consumption or trafficking because it destroys life, it destroys the economy, of any nation and it destroyed the uh, new generation that will lead this country. Please stop it and be a good citizen of this country. Prime Fighters, the number one security program on television. So sir, do you sus subscribe to the notion that diminishing social values and moral decadence in the society are part of the problems which lead are leaders of tomorrow into the drug problems? To some extent, yes. Because if you say decadence in the society, I mean, when we started, when we graduated, we walked into employment. We had choice. But a graduate who graduates this today has nothing in, in, in preparation for him. So over the year, he becomes despondent. He becomes frustrated. And frustration can, see, can actually lead to uh, drug abuse. Because when you look left, right, and center, and you don't have a way forward, even idleness, they say, is the devil's workshop. So I quite agree. The menace of drugs is not limited to the individual and its immediate environment. Yeah. But it also has a macro effect on the nation Good. via distortion of the economy by way of inflow of unaccountable funds. That's true damage to the natural image and enhancing criminality. What is the agency doing in this regard? That is the aspect of money laundering, which is part of the jurisdiction of uh, NDLEA. So what is your appreciation of money laundering? Money laundering simply means washing dirty money to become good money. That is the simplest definition that everybody will understand. And this is the way it works. If a courier successfully carries out one kilogram of heroin to the United States of America, he will sell it for $15,000. So how does it bring $15,000 back into the economy? In the United States of America, if you deposit $10,000, they will trail you because record will show. So actually, the, the couriers will not put their money in the bank. But they will want to use it to buy materials or goods or things that they know they can bring back into the country. And when they bring it, they will find a way of selling it. So when they sell it now, you know, nobody will know the color or the source of the money. So that simple explanation is what money laundering is all about. And just like you said, it has a distortion, a distorting effect on the economy in the sense that 
you are here a graduate, maybe you started work and you are on 10,000 naira per month. Your colleague who decides to go into drug trafficking, makes, if he successfully uh, travels, makes an average of $15,000, not naira. So when you get to the market, who is the king? The man who is not contributing anything to the economy. So you can see that that is why so many people who are living some, you know, big or some un 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 unexplainable life, we have had in recent time to trail them, to ask them to come and explain how they made their money. So this brings us to the our international collaboration. Yeah. One of the least understood aspects of counseling, least understood aspects of counseling narcotics, yeah. especially in the third world, yeah. is international collaboration. Right. Yet it's a key component of the multifaceted campaign that is tantamount to any nation's counter narcotic measures. Yeah. How has the agency benefited from international collaborators and what are the strategies? Now, international collaboration is a very important strategy that uh, NDLA has adopted in fighting the drug minas. International collaboration simply means international cooperation. Because drug is a borderless crime, Nigeria as a, traffic, uh, as a transiting nation, as a transiting nation, requires the support of, say, America as a consuming nation in the exchange of intelligence in the exchange of information, in the exchange of technical experts. In all these areas, we have benefited, or we have mutually benefited, because there is good flow of information from us to the, say, Americans or the UK, and vice versa. In terms of first parties, we acknowledge that they have more expertise than us, and they have, to a large extent, assisted us by training some of our officers in counter narcotic intelligence, and a lot of trainees which have benefited from them. And aside from that, they have made some useful contributions in terms of logistics to our operations, especially at the MMIA. So if I may ask, are you favorable, favorably disposed to capital punishment for offenders? I am not. Why, sir? Because it will not necessarily stop the problem. Don't forget that the punishment for armed robbery is capital. Has some robbery stopped? Except the underlying problem. And what is the underlying problem? Government must be able to provide an enabling environment for more jobs to be created and for the youth of this, the teeming youth of this country to have something to do. Imagine what GSM has done to the system. Do you know that close to one million Nigerians live on the GSM? So if government is able to devise another thing, maybe uh, Nepal problem, if they are, able, they are able to solve it the way the telephone problem is solved, many more Nigerians will get involved, I mean, employed. Capital punishment will not stop drug trafficking because the attach, I mean, the, what do I call it, the, attra uh, the, 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 the attraction is very much. You see a situation where if you successfully go to Pakistan and buy one kilogram of heroin for, say, $2,000, that same two, two, uh, one kilogram, when you take it to the United States, you set it selling for fifteen thousand dollars, thirteen thousand dollars gain. So people will keep on to be crazy for it. But if they have another thing to do in their country, the temptation will not be there. So, sir, aside from finance, yes. what are the other constraints they are faced with in the National Drug Law Enforcement Agency? Oh uh, well, you see, apart from finance, if I, what I would say is that finance is the bedrock of the problem. Because if there's adequate finance, you will have logistics. If there's adequate finance, you have more staff. If there's ad adequate finance, you'll be able to do training. And then you'll be able to bring the officers up, uh, you know, to, 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 to do the, the, the job. So while I, I don't want to trivialize other problems, I think the major problem is funding. Because if we have enough funding, most of the problems that seem to stare us at the face will be surmounted by the chairman. So, sir, as um, the Director of Prosecution, mm. National Drug Law Enforcement Agency, mm. since you assumed office, sir, yeah. what has been your major challenges? Yeah, good. Uh, the major challenges I've had is to contend with the, um, 
what I'll call the, 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 the requirements of my office. The office is a very challenging one. Apart from the court duties, there are a lot of administrative duties which I am involved in. And so to be able to cope, it's not been easy. But what I've tried to do is to empower my subordinates in such a way that if I'm not around, they are able to carry on as if I am in the office. So there are a lot of challenges, but with the cooperation of my support of my staff, I have not been able to find it too demanding. The rising trend of underage drug traffickers yes. is much to be desired. Mm. What is the agency doing to alert parents, guardians, school authorities, government at the local, state and federal levels to this ugly trend? Public enlightenment is part of our strategy and we've been doing it. In all the state capitals, we have what called drug demand reduction officers who go out to, uh, in liaison with the state Ministry of Health or the local government relevant department to educate parents on the menace of drug trafficking. But let me tell you that the criminal is always a step ahead. What they think is that the agency or the officers of the agency at the airport will not you know, pay any attention to the children because they say, oh, I look at this one, this one is not likely to carry drugs. But from our experiences, officers have been trained to know that even the youth, they constitute high, high risk. And that's why we are picking them almost on a daily basis. Crime fighters, promoting security consciousness.